Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out here. It's a, a day of rest today for me, um, but um, I just wanted to make this video because I think it's so important and I've made a few videos on this, but it doesn't seem to be sinking in and I need to hit it home again because it's so important. Um, my website's jasonburnspreacher.com jasonburnspreacher.com you can get me on Facebook where there's lots of sermons there by other preachers um, and then on Twitter you've got loads of uh, apologetic videos and uh, material that you can go and read then you have my website's full of books and things you can download so that's jasonburnspreacher.com um, this is a specific challenge to uh, certain Christian apologists like James White and Jay Smith, people who I greatly admire. I greatly admire Jay Smith, I greatly admire James White, the great mighty warriors for the Lord and I greatly respect them. But this is a challenge to them and it's a challenge to many, many uh, evangelicals who kind of fallen into this path that I'm going to deal with. And also it's a challenge to uh, some of the Christian apologists down at Hyde Park who I really love and respect and we're brothers and we're warriors together. But um, the, the first point I want to deal with, um, just to nail, really important, uh, is a, an apologetic that keeps cropping up at Hyde Park by Christian apologists and the apologetic goes like this, um, when we're defending the Bible, uh, Christians don't believe that it's the very word of God. This is the argument. Um, we have the kerygma, that is to say, the death and resurrection of Christ as authoritative. And we know that it's true because it has apostolic authority behind it. Now. This is a wrong way of arguing for the Christian faith because what they're trying to do is when you get textual problems, so the Muslim might say, well, John, in John there's a passage of woman in adultery, uh, that passage is not there, um, you know, uh, it's been added, and the Christian apologist using this kind of method will say, well, you know, we don't think it's anything is really the word of God what we think is that we have the kerygma and then uh, the apostolic theology behind that so we don't have to argue about textual critic criticism really about what is exactly the word of God that's just a nitty-gritty argument that's not particularly relevant in this discussion uh, you have a, we don't have your kind of Muslim view that every word of God is inspired so I want to deal with that view because that view is totally bogus and is totally wrong and is not according to the word of God. The Bible quite clearly teaches that every word of God is inspired and um, it, it, the Bible clearly teaches that. Um, one of the one of the um, clearest is uh, 2 Timothy 3 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for proof so there all scripture is inspired and then if you turn to Luke it says here in Luke when the Lord's attacked by Satan and Jesus answered and said unto him Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him thou shalt serve. And then verse 10, For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So the devil's trying to use scripture, but the Lord is using scripture, the word of God, to counter the devil. So, Scripture. So the Lord is using Scripture, the Word of God, to answer the devil's accusations. Uh, Paul is saying all Scripture is inspired of God. 
So the Bible clearly, clearly teaches the word of God is absolutely important and every word of God is important. And to say that Christianity is not based on a word for word religion is just nonsense. And it's coming from an academic, scholarly, cultural agenda. And if you listen and read uh, the history of theology for the last 150 years, that is classic liberalism. Uh, Rudolf Bultmann would often say what, what we need to do is get back to the kerygma. You know, liberals um, will often say, um, liberal scholars will often say Christianity is, is not biblioratory where we're just worshipping the Bible. So they try to get you away from the Bible, you see. And the Muslims are not daft. They can see that this argument that's being used, it, 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 you're shooting yourself in your foot. You're, 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 you're actually losing the argument. The point is, is that the word of God is pure. The word of God has been preserved, okay? And we can, we can, we have a textual criticism that can defend that and show that the word has been preserved. And that's an older textual criticism that is has been lost today because of modern textual criticism, moving away from uh, Dean Bergen and Scrivener's ideas to a more uh, uh, more of a Westcott and Hall idea of textual criticism, which has weakened our understanding of the inspiration and authority of the Bible. So, so that that's the, I'm going to get deeper into the textual criticism in a minute. So, the Word of God is fully inspired. Every word is from God. So, any evangelical who gives this argument that it's not the word of God that's important. Christianity is not about the word of God. Read Psalm 119. <laughs> Read Psalm 119. Read the parable of the sower. The word of God is central to the Christian faith. Every word of God is central. And the kerygma, the death and resurrection of Jesus, is preserved in the word of God. It's the word of God that helps us to interpret the message. It's the word of God that preserves the message. It's the word of God that helps us to interpret the message. So it's a very dangerous teaching because the persons who are advocating it don't realise they've been infected by liberal ideology. They don't, they're evangelical, they're sincere, but they have really not understood the problem of what they're doing and the danger of what they're doing. Number one, they're, they're directly going against what the Bible says. They're directly going against how Jesus used the Word of God. He didn't say, oh, I'm just quoting the kerygma, or I'll just give you the kerygma. He just, you know, he quoted the Bible, the Old Testament, by every word of God. Yeah? The apostles, their teaching was seen as the Word of God. Even 1, 2 Peter says Paul's epistles are the Word of God. Um, and then classic statements, the classic statements in the history of the church, like the Westminster Confession, clearly state that God's word, is, every word is inspired, and that the words have been preserved, that God has preserved his word. So that's the first point. The second point is concerning James White, J. Smith, and these apologists who will turn around and say um, that there are bits been added to the Bible, bit, bits such as uh, the woman committing adultery, the last ending of Mark, and they will admit this to Muslim apologists, that these passages have been added and they're not really in the word of God. Now, you might as well, as a Christian apologist, take a gun to your head and blow your brains out, because you've lost any credibility against your opponents in the debate, and they know that, and they can see it, and they exploit it. And the Muslim public see it and they'll realise that you've lost the debate. And the reason why James White, the reason why J. Smith 
and, and, and Muslim, uh, Christian apologists have taken on these kind of ideas is because they don't really have a grasp of the history of textual criticism. I know James White has, knows Greek and he studied uh, textual criticism a little bit or quite a bit. But he doesn't really fully, fully understand the significance of the history of textual criticism on how textual criticism took a turning away from Dean Bergen, away from Scrivener, to uh, a more modern idea of textual criticism. And so we have, uh, for example, like um, West Gotton Hall, the 19th century bishops who came up with their ideas of textual criticism, giving various ideas and some of those ideas were very, very subjective. And modern textual criticism took on board these subjective ideas. And now what we have is modern Bible translations are not based on the best textual criticism. And modern uh, Christian apologists are not rooted in the best textual criticism. So, I'll give you an example. In the last ending of Mark, James White and... J. Smith and many others might say, oh, the last ending of Mark's not in there. It was added. Well, if you look at the Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, okay, okay, these are the oldest manuscripts that we we uh, we have, and the last ending of Mark's not in these so so-called old endings. But what they don't tell you is there's indications that the right the copyist of the last ending uh, of Sinaiticus and Vaticanus we're aware of the last ending of Mark, okay, and they made they, they they made indications about this. Secondly, we have manuscript only a few years after Sinaiticus and Vaticanus with the last ending of Mark, and if uh, a passage is generally in the Bible, it should be in all families. There's various families of textual criticism. The last ending of Mark is in all the textual families. So actually there's a very strong case that the last ending of Mark is actually in the Word of God. Right? Now I've just given you a very short, snappy introduction to the scholarship on the last end of Mark. But to say to a Muslim, oh this has been added in, you might as well take a gun to your head and blow it away apologetically. But if you can say, no, actually, it's not been added, this is the pure word of God, and we've got the evidence to back it up, the textual evidence, then you've strengthened your case that the word of God has been preserved. And this is what James White and Jay Smith and modern apologists are not doing. And, and they're doing damage to the Christian faith, they're doing damage to Christian apologetics, they're doing damage to Muslim apologetics, uh, outreach okay you're doing damage to the Christian faith and to Christian apologetics and to Muslim evangelism if you say oh Christianity is not based on the Word of God just the kerygma that's just blatantly false we've gone into a few verses about that read Psalm 119 as a final rebuttal to that and you do great damage if you say well uh, passages have been added large passages like the woman adultery and the last ending of Mark, they've been added. When we can provide clear evidence that they're part of the Word of God. Yeah, so take it or leave it. Um, I try my best, I try to help, but uh, Christians are not list Christians don't listen, and, and you just weaken yourself uh, in debate at Hyde Park if you admit. If you admit, if you say it's just kerygma and it's not about every word of God, you, you, you've weakened yourself in debate. And you have weakened yourself in debate if you say, oh, well, these things have been added, like the last end in the mark or the woman in adultery, when there's evidence to suggest that they're in, in the, they are the word of God. So... Um, yeah, um, if you want to look at a different kind of scholarship, Google Dean Bergen uh, on uh, on the last ending of Mark. Um, 
But there are new works that have come out recently over the last couple of years that defend these positions that I've been talking about. Um, I don't like to name names of, of Christian apologists, but I think I have to name names because this is doing damage to the cause of Christ and there are apologists that are not as famous, not as well known, who are coming up and who, who are looking up to Jane Smith and looking up to James White and they're copying this kind of apologetic and it and it's not good, it does damage and, uh, and James White needs to stop it and Jay Smith needs to stop it and you need to start being more scholarly and start reading uh, go back to your history and start reading uh, textual criticism from a different stream of scholarship that is, that is a lot better informed and a lot, a lot better equipped to deal with these uh, challenges than modern textual critics and even modern evangelical textual critics who've imbibed some of the presuppositions of modern scholarship rather than starting from a strong theological point of view and doing the textual criticism from a strong theological point of view and if you do that you'll be in a much stronger position so for example in here he says that the Word of God has been preserved so you'll do your textual criticism with that presupposition but modern evangelical scholarship does not start from that presupposition. It starts from modern textual critical uh, theories and apparatus where they think you can just pick and mix and, and use subjective methodologies and, and, and if that is if that's the way to go about textual criticism. But um, we have to start from our theological foundation as we go into the historical uh, studies and textual critical studies of the text. Um, and, and if we do that, we'll be much more careful and much more um, integral in our approach if, if we do that. So, I'll, I'll under this video, I'll, I'll link to a few sources that you can go and study, a few few different groups at a few different places a few, you know a few different books that you can go and read that might help you but please 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 I beg you stop using this argument concerning it's just the kerygma and it's not the Word of God because that is totally wrong and please please stop following James White and J Smith on modern textual criticism Go to the resources that I put under this video for you and just check out what I'm going to give you and see whether it makes sense or not. That's all I ask. And if you study what I say, I give you the scholarship, go and study it. You'll be much better equipped then to argue the case for the Christian faith based on the text of the Bible. Alright, I'm doing this to help, not to start controversy, but I just feel that enough's enough. People have to be called out, young apologists have to be challenged, this is not the way to go, you've turned the wrong way, this is a better way that I'm offering you and, and sharing with you and you need to go a proper way and conduct yourself in a proper way when it comes to that, arguing about the text of the Bible. It's no good being in a high profile debate with Adan and admitting that there are Bible passages being added to the Bible. You might as well just give up and go on. Alright, God bless you and love to everybody else. God bless.